Hi, welcome back to our creative videos. I'm Pam Hayes from Hayes Sewing Machine Company of Wilmington, Delaware. And today we're gonna do a little quick gift bag. And it's from the Atkinson's Designs Company and it's bubbly bags. And I've already made the small. And what's nice is it is like collapsible. So when you're working with it, you can actually push that bit up and it folds down. So if you ever need nice. it for storage, it's great. And it pops right back up. Mm -hmm. All right. I'm going to show you the tall one. And the tall one is for bubbly. <laughs> it's for wine or whatever you like to have, soda, <laughs> or whatever works for you. Now, it's going to have an applique on the front. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to do that. And then the bit that I put in the center, okay, and I'll show you how, where to do this, it's literally called stiff stuff. Okay. So it has the ability to make your bag stand up, but it's not so stiff that when you have to turn it, it's uncomfortable to, to do so. And then it also has interfacing in there as well. And the interfacing that I used was um, Pelon SF 101, uh, which was hands down one of my favorite just fabric mid-weight ones. It does a nice job. All right, so come on over here and we are going to get started. We this is the outside of my bag and we need to mark at the ends a one inch piece so one inch line and actuality Woman's prerogative to change her mind. Why I, why I changed my mind is that was a friction pen. The friction pen, remember, what does the friction pen do? Disappears when it gets hot. Disappears when it gets hot. And what am I going to be doing? Pressing. So just think of that combination. All right. So we're going to go. We're going to do one inch mark on either side. Alrighty. Now, come over to the iron. And we, a lot of this is iron stuff that we're going to be doing first. <laughs> I know you can't see, but Loretta jumped. <laughs> she's like, she's going to drop that on me. I wouldn't. But she's like, no. All right, so basically what we're going to do is the same thing we're doing on the inside lining. All right, so you take a look. One inch from the edge. Got it. Two longer but the thinner pieces. So there's mm -hmm. four total. So actually you're cutting out eight because you're doing two for, you know, a set for the lining, a set from the outside. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to also have that inside. And this is the SF 101. So I have cut that. So they want you to line it up. So that mark that we lined up. And then they do want that, to do that again. Sure. The one inch mark. Got it. The end is going to be at that. And they want you to have about an eighth of an inch. So we're going to lay this out eighth of an inch, and then we have our longer bit. And you'll see that there's a gap. Mm -hmm. That's correct. So we're just going to iron this. And I'm assuming that the gap is to make it easier to stitch. Yes. You got it. That's really clever. It is clever. So when you're looking, oh, I'll have, why am I cutting these bits? There's a reason for mm -hmm. it. All right. So again, iron this down. And this, again, the SF-101 is an actual fabric interfacing as opposed to a non-woven. She's not um, very sp specific. Um, all she says is a fusible woven interfacing. Okay. So, you know, I thought SF-101. I've done bags before and SF-101 is always nice. 
All right, we have that lined up. We're now gonna go and do the same thing on the other side. So again, about an eighth of an inch, both sides. Our long section. And then, unlike the lining, mm -hmm. this guy has a rectangle that's for the bottom of the bag. For the bottom of the bag. And again, you have nice spacing. If for some reason that you're laying this out and you don't have like the gaps, check your measurements. Okay. <laughs> or just trim them up. Or just trim them up. <laughs> but you do want to have the, the gaps. So when I'm doing this on the lining, which I thought this was appropriate. Look at that fabric. Absolutely. Chocolate. Chocolate and champagne. Chocolate and champagne. The lining does not have the stiff stuff on it. Mm -hmm. It's only the outside of the bag that actually has the product that's the stiff, what we call the stiff stuff. And the stiff stuff is not fusible. It's going to get stitched. Okay. So we're going to make sure everything is nicely adhered. And ta-da! Ta-da! That's what you're looking for. All right. So when we come on over, the... stuff is going to be on the long intermediate sections and then she has you cut two mm -hmm. for this and you sew them independently of each other okay that way you can bend it you can bend it somebody it's like somebody designed this I huh? know right like somebody <laughs> thought that out Alright, so when we're working with this guy, again, we're just going to stitch and... May I just ask her a quick question? Sure. Do we need to do the applique before we apply stitch no. stuff? No. Okay, good enough. But that's a good question, and I did look at the instructions. <laughs> I'm like, ah. But she, they have it, so it's <laughs> that way you don't need in, you know, stabilizer. A stabilizer. Okay, yeah. alright, cool. So when you're working with it... Just a question. Just a question. And I understand. Alright, and we want you to sew it about an eighth of an inch. And you're doing this with a straight stitch? Straight stitch. Just a basic old straight stitch. Again, we're just stitching around. And we're doing a little bit of back stitch. Now remember, don't think I can use whatever thread I want color-wise. Because remember, this is going to show on the outside of the bag. Gotcha. All right. So, so be matchy match. Yeah, if you want to be matchy matchy, then you you're this is when you're gonna do it. If you're like, eh, it doesn't really matter, then you're good. And again, eighth of an inch. Try to have it as accurate as you can.
and it does start to get a little <laughs> stiff, which is technically the point. The point. <laughs> so no point in getting upset by that. Stitch. All right, now the center section. You're going to go, and when we line this up, you line it up along the edge, and again, we're going to stitch around. And again, a little back stitch. And then we're going to do the same thing on the opposite side. So again, the reason why there's that separation at the bottom is so it's going to make it easier to bend, which I must admit, I was impressed when I saw that. I couldn't quite figure it out. And then as soon as I was done the project and I went to fold it up, I'm like, ah, there you go. <laughs> Just love those aha moments, right? Uh-huh. It's like, oh, that's why I did that. All else fails is follow the instructions. But it's so hard to just follow the directions. <laughs> Creative people aren't built that way. <laughs> Alrighty. So, that guy is done. So I have, again, my two pieces. And then the next is we're going to do the applique. She gives you in... Um, the pattern. She gives you the bottle. Mm -hmm. She gives you a martini glass and she gives you a wine glass. I decided to go for the bottle and I love for the martini. The olive. She does buttons. Oh, how There's cute. There's two buttons. The, the olive button and then a red button on top. That's sweet. I thought that was cute. So. Not to mention so much easier than trying to applique those tiny little circles. <laughs> right. So at this point we're going to go and is there a smaller pair of scissors? Yes, there is. Sorry. All right. I traced. I did steam a seam. Actually, I think I did Lazy Girl um, light bond. And we're going to stitch or cut, I should say, all the way around on the line. So I laid this down. If you never worked with this before, um, I actually have another video on all it was on was applique. Mm -hmm. So you know, if in doubt, you can refer back refer. to that. Video. We can actually have Patricia put the link to that in the yeah. comments. And we just go, and we're just gonna fuse it on. I fused it onto the back side of my fabric. And then you're going to cut. And it has a piece of paper. And that's what I drew on. Okay, my piece of paper. Mm -hmm. That's going to be the outside. I thought that was kind of a neat wine bottle. And if you go to be like you're tearing your material, it is an easier pull off. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, in the instructions, she'll tell you 
you want to go about an inch and a half from the bottom. And I'm just double checking that number. Yes, she wants you to do an inch and a half basically from the stitch line. All right, and then, you don't have to see this, but I'm just going to go over and iron. Da -na, da -na, da -na, yeah. Now, the only thing I would encourage you to do, uh, make sure you put the wine bottle towards the, the oh, bottom. Oh, yes, 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 the bottom towards the bottom of the back. Because nothing's so sad, but an oh. empty bottle. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so now at this point, she basically tells you just to do like a straight stitch or a satin stitch. So I'm just going to do a straight stitch going around. Could you do a um, zigzag blanket stitch? Yeah, whatever you like. But I'm just going to straight stitch around here. And remember, it's fused on. So you really don't have to do anything elaborate. And it's not like you're going to be washing this bag a whole lot. No. If you're spilling your wine on the wet <laughs> bag, I'll, then we have other issues. <laughs> you got other issues. You got it. So like I said, at this point, we're just stitching around. Again, blanket stitch would work fine. All of that would be just fine. Zigzag. Whatever you, you want to. Mm-hmm. You can even do a fancy decorative stitch. All right. And then again, we're going to go do a little back stitch, just a smidgen, and cut. All right, so that guy is done. Beautiful. All right. Again, I like to press it after I stitched it just to make sure that everything is adhered. All right. Now, the next step to our piece is doing the, um, I should say, you also have an optional pocket for the outside. I did not do the optional pocket, but the handles. You're kind of like, well, Pam, all I see is zippers. <laughs> mm -hmm. And we don't see zippers. I'm sorry. Hold on for a second. Let me zoom out a little bit. There you go. Zippers. Yep. Mm -hmm. You do either two 14 inch mm -hmm. or one 22. Okay. Your choice. And if you take a look, that's the handles. Oh, how cute. The coils are at the edge. Uh huh. And then you just stitch them together. I thought that was so sweet. That way you don't have to do anything elaborate. Yeah, no twisting, no nope. top stitching. So what you're going to do is you're going to take, and we are going to cut the ends off. All right, so the metal ends, so do not do, not do this with your gingers. Mm -hmm. You're going to cut the ends off, the metal ends. Now, I did two zippers that were exactly the same color for this guy. They were both kind of a light purple. But this one, I thought I would do two different color yellows and do one color for each on each side, just to, you know, jazz it up a little bit. All right. So, done that. Now you're just going to unzip. Mm-hmm. So now, Which normally would be like oh, horror. <laughs> catastrophically bad. The one thing I thought was hysterical in the pattern, they tell you to set these aside. Uh huh. But you don't do anything with them. Oh, she okay. Just set them aside. Set them aside. Okay. Just set them aside. Well, maybe for a future project. There you It'd be kind of interesting to do a zipper with a diff, you know, one color t tape yeah. and, and teeth and another color slide. So I also thought it would be. Uh, just think also about side bucks, make like earrings out of them or something. There you go. All right. So what we're going to do 
is I'm taking one of each. Can you see one color mm -hmm. and one color? And you want to line it up so that the zipper tape is kind of near the coil. Okay, and I'm going to stitch it this way to start with. And I'm going to tell my machine that I have a 4D on, so it doesn't yell at me. And you are just going to sew this down. And I'm just holding them together. And you're going to sew both sides. So you're going to sew down. And then we're going to sew down the other side. And this one you will have to flip it to the other side. And remember, you're going to cut these, so if you don't get it quite lined up the way you had in mind in the first couple of inches, it's not a problem. Because you're you, all you need is 10 inches. And what size zipper did you do again? I'm 14. 14? Yep. Size 14. So when you're working with it, it's, like I said, if you goof up a little bit on getting your needle position exactly where you wanted it to be or something like that. And did you do those from like the bulk zippers? Yep. 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 It's so, just we, your standard so we have bulk making. zippers here at the store uh, that are 14 inches long in a variety of colors and they're like 99 cents each. And so um, if you're doing little uh, pouches or that kind of thing particularly ones that you trim down um, they're fabulous zippers to do, use for that wait how many colors do you think they come in Pam several several 50 <laughs> 50 different colors probably, probably. Yeah. You have your handles made. Isn't that the fastest thing you've ever seen? Mm-hmm. And right. I like the two-tone. I like the two-tone. It's kind of interesting. Very cool. All right. So now what we're going to do is we need to cut them to be 10 inches. So I'm just going to cut the one side because I know, remember, these are 14. So I know I have something to work with. And I'm using kind of what we call in the store our box scissors. If you catch somebody doing this with your favorite gingers, ooh, that's not good. <laughs> All right, so I'm cutting 10. Okay, going to line it up. Lady was in the store, and uh, she was telling me that, she goes, do you know what ginger means? And I said, I assumed it was like the family name of you know, the original German company that made Gingers. Um, and she goes, oh, no, no, no. She says, I've always told my children, Ginger means don't touch. They print it right on the scissor. <laughs> Gotta love that. I'm like, okay. <laughs> That's funny. All right. Now, we're going to sew these onto our handle or our, our bag, the handles, the zip handles, and we're going to go two and three quarters in. We're going to put a mark, and again, I'm back to my friction pen, and you're going to do that on both sides. So two and three quarters. And then you're going to put your mark. All right? You're going to do that on both sides. So now we're going to take, and that mark 
we're going to have the coils. So you see how we have both coils up Hang on for two seconds. All right, there you go. Okay, we have two kind of the right side of the zipper. See how that's the wrong side? The right side of the zipper is going to go down, and we are going to line it up at that two and three quarters mark, and we're going to fold it around to the two and three quarters mark. So the outside edge has that, okay? It's another advantage of the two-tone zipper. It's easy to see if you've twisted it or not. It's easy to see if you twisted it. So again, coils down, and we're going to wrap it around, and then we're going to stitch. So back to my regular foot. And they want you to stitch it at three quarters of an inch. So you're going to tack them down at three quarters of an inch. And if you think, that's really far down, stick with me. <laughs> I'm just going to go straight across because this stitching isn't going to show. If you just wanted to tack at the zippers, fine too. All right, we're going to go across, do the same thing. Again, three quarters of an inch. And we're going to go and stitch across. And if you're like, you're stitching it across zippers, um, I find, don't think about it too much. The more you think about it, the more you're like, oh! And that's always, why- Always have extra needles, because if you have yeah. them, there's no, uh, there's never any issue. <laughs> that's right. All right, now, in the instructions, they're gonna tell you to fuse the SF-101 on the lining. Mm -hmm. They're also going to tell you there is no piece in the center. Mm -hmm. So, yes, yes, we are done that. And now we're going to stitch just the ends. Okay. And the ends that we're going to stitch, the seam allowance is going to be one inch. Hence, the reason why it they kind of tie it, they have us put the handles on at the one uh, three-quarter inch. So we're going to stitch across. So again, you don't you're not going to see anything and it's a one inch. And you're going to flip it over, and you're going to do the same thing. And I noticed it went a little long on that one, so I'll just trim it up. Gotta love that. All right, so now, again, same thing. Stitching on the other side. So we've done one handle side, and now we're doing the next handled side. I'm just putting a couple pins in. It's going to lay flat enough, but it won't be totally flat, remember, because you have the zippered handles in there. So we're going to do our one inch seam. And we're just going to sew across. All right. So now at this point, we are now going to take and we are going to flip this around. And I heard my bobbin spin. There you go. Just 
just going to re-thread that. All right, so we're going to take and we're going to flip. So the ends are finished and finished nice. very nicely. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to go and give it a quick press. So now at this point, we are going to stitch about an eighth of an inch all the way around the perimeter. So eighth of an inch. And this is just going to hold everything nice all the way around. I'm just using the inside edge of my 1C foot, and that is close enough to an eighth of an inch. Remember, they're just using this so nothing shifts. other end. And you can see why I wasn't worried about um, reinforcing the zippers. Mm-hmm. Because you're stitching over them again? Yeah. You're stitching over them again several times. Because we couldn't have a handle break free of our bag. I know, right? <laughs> and lose our wand. That would be very sad. And remember, if you just wanted a, um, a tall bag, just, you know, don't put the wine bottle on. <laughs> I was just thinking that it might be kind of a fun thing if you... Like had a bunch of knitting needles or something like that. That yep. would be a really fun. All right. Now, they also want you to secure the top a little bit more. So they're going to have you sew at the three quarters of an inch. And I'm just double checking. Yes. And just at the ends. So you're just going to do three quarters of an inch. Stitch it across. Just at the ends. All right. And now, the piece de resistance. Here's our bag. I'm sorry. Can it's you? All right. all right. We're just like. I know it's a tall bag. Sorry. It's, there you go. It's You're the good. tall one. All right. So we line it up. And we're going to go and we are going to tuck the bottom. That's the mm -hmm. quote unquote tricky part. But all right. Hang on for a second. I'm going to zoom in on that. So pull it out for a second, yep. Pam, if you would. So it was tall okay but that wouldn't give it any depth correct so we fold remember that that's why there's that crease in the yeah, interfacing yeah, yeah. all right and then you just are going to stitch all the way down all right great and this one we're going to be doing quarter inch seam I just 
want to make sure that's well reinforced up at the top. And she suggests doing your quarter inch um, seam from the top and work your way down. That way the top edges are nice and finished, nice and equal. All right, and then we're going to do the same thing on the other side. Quarter inch seam. And again, you can pin this, but I don't find it shifts much. Do you think it's because of the interfacing, or do you think it's because of the stiff stuff? Or, yep. or yes. <laughs> I'll say, yes, it is. Yep. <laughs> All right, and we have one final step of they want you to zigzag the edge. So I'm doing my traditional zigzag, and I'm just kind of whipping it over the edge. So when I'm doing that zigzag that's over to the right is literally coming off. Mm -hmm. And when you say traditional zigzag, how wide? Uh, about three and a half by one and a half. Three and a half in width, one and a half in length. Yep. So, yes. Alrighty. I backstitched at the beginning and at the end, and I'm going to flip it over. Do the same thing on the other side. Alrighty, you're going to give it a good haircut, so you're going to go back and trim all the fabric fibers and all your stitching, I won't bore you to tears with that, and then we're just going to take it, and this is where you will appreciate that the stiff stuff is not as stiff as some of the stuff that you can, you can work with. Yeah, because if you do something like Peltex, Ooh, it's super hard on your hands. It's super to hard on your hand, yeah. Get there. And ta da! Oh, Pam, it looks gorgeous. And there you go. So we have our bag, and look how nice that side is. Oh, yeah. How cute is that? I was looking at the pattern from the picture. I'm like, oh, that's going to be really hard to do, and not at all. And then you have the chocolates on the inside. Chocolates on the inside. All righty. Hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you next time.